please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Very good morning. Welcome to Chart Busters. Well, this is a show where we're going to highlight the markets. We're also going to tell you how to trade the markets. And in fact, we'll get a couple of managements as well. I'm Nigel D'Souza and with me as always is Mangla Malu. Well, Mangla, we are starting off uh, on a weakish note. Uh, you know, the uh, a week on a Monday morning, in fact, the Nifty is mildly lower. But if you take a look at the Asian markets, well, mm -hmm. some of them are trading with cuts of around half a percent, mildly in the red. So we're in step with what's going on in the globe uh, as we speak. The contribution chart actually should come up for you. If it wasn't for Infosys, we would have been down maybe around 45 points now. Because Infosys alone, that's the mm. Nifty Bank. Let's get the Nifty contribution chart up for you. Infosys by itself is pulling the Nifty up by around 20 points. That's right. And if you you know take that out, then we would have easily been down 45 to around 50 points, or we would have been closer towards the 10,970 instead of closer towards um, 11,000 that we are as of now. The breadth of the market. That's quite worrying. You have only one stock that's advancing for around four stocks that's declining. And it's the start of the week. Maybe they spend the weekend together, but now the advanced decline ratio, they just don't want to be together. But there are select stocks that are doing well from the broader markets. Sona Koyo, the erstwhile Sona Koyo, that is Jacket, that's catching your eye. From the low point of the day, there's a massive block at around mm -hmm. 92, 93 rupees. From there, the stock has seen a sharp, sharp surge. And it's uh, gone to the high point of the day. I was trying to find out who exactly is that. I mean, who could be party to this? No clue as of now. But just going by the volumes, it'll be interesting to see who exactly was part of this transaction because the stock has taken off in an otherwise weak market. Absolutely, Nigel. You know, first up, bonjour, como allez vous? Pardon Ooh. my French, <laughs> because uh, you so know the World Cup. French yes, kiss last no, night. no <laughs> French kiss or nothing. Just the match. Why? Uh, why not? <laughs> no license. <laughs> no license, and uh, yeah. I mean, you're <laughs> no, no. Perfecting your French, I think. Uh, uh, well. You well <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Some the 11,000. French 000. wine, French kiss. I mean, Manglam, come on. No, nothing of that sort. It's just the French football that we were watching yesterday. Uh, so let's keep it at that. It's a okay. Monday morning. Uh, you spoke about the 11,000 uh, level for the Nifty. We were below that. So that is something I'll be watching. Uh, I'll be watching out for. Now the football is over, but the 11,000 mark, there is an even keel out there. In the morning, we were talking about the 11,000 call having lesser open interest than the 11,000 put. And with the Nifty now falling below that 11,000 mark, there you have the 11,000 call, 35.3 lakh shares in open interest. And now the 11,000 put should come up for you as well. And there, it's a bit of an equalizer. So let's see. Okay, 35 lakh shares out there. So a bit of a tussle out there. Yeah, that's a hella, hella po. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded more South Indian. <laughs> that sounded more South Indian than French. But anyway, but Trace, right. you're, okay. you're in a French mood this morning. Uh, yes, no, no French wine, no French kiss last night. It's so boring. Let's go get straight to the top headline. Yeah, hopefully this one's not in <laughs> French. Okay. In a big setback for Dr. Reddy's US District Court converts a temporary injunction against generic Suboxone into a preliminary injunction. Says the company cannot relaunch the generic until the patent lit litigation with Indivior concludes. And Infosys reports saw softer than expected quarter one numbers. Revenue growth is a tad bit lower, but the stock recovers from the lows as the management commentary is optimistic on prospects of a turnaround. Nifty Bank, that one trades near the low point of the day. ICICI Bank being the key drag on reports of a fresh external probe into 31 accounts where the bank allegedly delayed provisioning. And PC Trailers stanks in trade after the company withdraws its buyback plan of around 424 crore rupees. Bankers ask the company to focus on growth and give priority to reducing their interest costs further. Weak quarter for DCB Bank. The bank reports its highest quarterly slippage in, is in the last 30 quarter, and the, which is the weakest operating profit growth in the last eight quarters. And as, as a result of that, the stock down 9%. How do you trade the Nifty from here? Ashwini Gujarat is uh, standing by with us. Uh, hi, Ashwini. Good morning. We're down 20 points, a tad bit below that 11,000 odd mark. Second half of trade, can we see a recovery or do you think it's going to be a bit of a down day? See, what's happening today is that for so many days, uh, you know, private banks used to save the blushes for the bank Nifty. Mm. Today, that's not happening because Kotak, Yes Bank, ICICI Bank, plus State Bank and several uh, PSU banks are uh, lower. Mm -hmm. So my sense is that the pressure on banking is increasing. The other problem is that IT, which was up almost 200 points, has given up most of its gains. Mm -hmm. So if banks continue to press lower, IT also uh, starts to move lower. 
then it will be tough for the market to uh, you know sustain that pressure so my sense is that uh, you know getting short on the market is a, a good idea and at some point we should get to that you know 10950 960 zone so uh, broadly the calls are on the uh, short side rb infra is a sell with a stop of 195 target of 182 uh, canra bank is a sell with a stop of 232 target of 216 and Tech Mahindra is a, a buy with a stop of 635, target of 660. Ashwini, a word on a couple of these mid caps. Uh, you know, the mid cap index has been underperforming for the last four or five days in a row with the Nifty holding up. But PBR catches my eye. It was down about 12% on Friday's trading session, seeing some bit of reversal today. It's uh, recovered about 4% from the lows. Do you think it's likely to consolidate, or uh, uh, what would your chart check say on PBR? let's uh, wait for it to settle down we know what happened with Sri transport right. you know, suddenly the market reacts on something which later on turns out to be not too significant right now you know nobody wants to hear noise you know the moment you get bad news particularly on a mid cap you take it down 10 percent and then you start thinking okay all right uh, thanks so much for that ashwini well only in the time to come we'll know whether or not it was an exaggerated reaction right. or not but mangla one thing pc dwellers you know this kind of, uh, this is just puts a bad taste in mouth, Absolutely. not just for the company, but for, imagine for an FII who's looking at India and then suddenly says that I look at the business, I look at the financials, I have to look at the auditor and then I have to trust the management as well. I mean, how much more can you look at it? You know, you're just souring the taste in everyone's mouth out there. And uh, that stock is down close to 20%. Now they've decided suddenly they don't want to do a buyback and focus on growth and reducing interest costs. You know, tomorrow as a customer, you go out there, place a big order of a few crores of rupees, pay only around 10% on the day of delivery, you'll say, bro, I'm not taking it because absolutely. I need to focus on something else. I mean, it, it, this is this is absolutely uncalled for. The stock is down close to 20%. After repeated times, the promoter saying that they're going to be going ahead with this buyback. And not participate in Promoters the buyback. will not participate. The acceptance ratio is higher. And this kind of value dis disruption, you know, as it is, the broader markets are totally out of favor. And with these kind of things, it's souring sentiment to what a large extent, actually. Which is why it trades at what it trades, Nigel, to be very honest. And, you know, if you take a look at the way Titan trades, a lot of people say that, oh, it's expensive valuation. But the management commentary is honest, at least when the muted demand was there. They went ahead to and the said, exchanges and yes. said that, yes, demand was muted. Yes, the stock is lower in today's trading session. But over the last many years, it has been a multi-bagger. Yeah. And the management quality is impeccable. If you keep yes. an eye out on PC Jewelers, is what you're talking about. It's the third buyback which is cancelled. Mm. The other buybacks which have been cancelled, if the stock market price is something to go by the verdict is pretty much there you have one person uh, not one person i'm sorry uh, you have quality limited which announced a buyback and then cancelled it, it you have vakrangi they announced a buyback they cancelled it all these stocks are down anywhere between 70 to 90 percent from the start of this year absolutely mangla and what we have learned in the last decade or so that we've been tracking the markets is buy quality buy high pedigree stocks and we are commonly talk about it the bluest the bluest of the blue, blue chips. chips you know that's those are the ones that will find favor in this kind of a market absolutely absolutely so we will watch out for that but let's move on we learned from sources that the LIC board is likely to give a go-ahead in increasing its stake in IDBI Bank to 51% when it meets later today. Yash Jain joins us uh, to line up all the expectations of that board meet. Yash? Well, Mangalam, June 29th was the date when the insurance regulator IRDA gave its approval to LIC to raise its stake in IDBI Bank to up to 51%. And today, the Board of Life Insurance Corporation of India meets to give that particular approval for this transaction. Now, of course, the headline approval would be to allow LIC to raise its stake to up to 51% in IDBI Bank from the current 10.82%. But there would be various finer details which would be discussed in today's board meeting. The most important one, LIC board members would discuss a turnaround plan as far as IDBI Bank is concerned and the essentials of this particular turnaround plan would be then later communicated to the Finance Ministry. Also, what we are given to understand is that LIC would uh, decide on the names of the nominee directors who would be sitting on the board of IDBI Bank post this particular transaction and we are given to understand that that LIC could give out uh, names of about two to three of these nominee directors. The third one, and of course, importantly, what we are given to understand is that LIC might also discuss a possible timeline that they are looking at as far as reducing their stake uh, back to 15% is concerned in IDBI Bank. These are the three important points. But apart from that, two very important points uh, where there is no clarity as of yet. One is the quantum of purchase. Uh, does uh, L LIC purchase 30% uh, to take its overall holding to 41% or 40% to take its overall holding to 51 percent and what's the valuation that we're looking at these two points will be a part of the cabinet note which will be formed later on and sent to the pmo
Yeah, all right, thanks so much for that, uh, Yash. Well, keep an eye out on that story and also keep an eye out on a few stocks. JSPL, the stock now has gone to around 197 odd mark. Remember, in Friday's trading session, it bounced from these levels. We had the management earlier today. They were telling us that long prices have corrected by close to 2,000 rupees. And in fact, we're seeing imports coming in. Besides that, it's monsoon season, so people will not construct. But that stock is seeing some selling pressure and the metals pack on the whole is seeing selling in today's trading session. Let's do one thing, though. We'll slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll get chatting with the management of Minda Industries. Remember... Welcome back. The mid-cap index still down about a percent and a half, but one company on our radar right now is Minda Industries. Uh, their board approved acquisition of 80% stake in a German company, ISIS. And to discuss this and more, we have uh, Mr. Sudhir Jain, the group CFO of the company, joining us on the phone line. Uh, Mr. Sudhir Jain, thanks a lot for joining in. If you could first up, give us a few details of the company itself, because we see the company did about uh, 6 million euro worth of revenue in FY17, uh, rather CY17. If you could tell us, is it profit making? What is the potential of growth for this company going forward? What are your targets uh, for this year and the year after this in terms of this acquisition? Yeah, I would like to explain the background of the whole thing. As you are aware that about two years ago, we decided to focus on auto electronics. Right. And uh, towards this step, uh, now we are setting up a centralized R&D facility in Pune and which will provide basic R&D facilities to our various existing products, including auto electronics. And uh, towards this step only, we have, uh, we are acquiring this company in Absolutely. Germany, which is ISIS, right. uh, which is based in Munich, mm -hmm. and uh, they are into engineering services. Right. Mr. Jen, provide, Mr. Jen yeah. we, are, you know, sir, we are running a little short on time, but we would like, you know, all your investors out there, they want to understand we have the revenue numbers with us. It's doing around 6 million uh, euros. So we want to know, sir, is this a profitable company? It's growing the top line, yes. And where do you see the top line growing to from around 5.9 million euros? Where is it headed? Yeah, this is a 6 million turnover company. EBITDA is positive. Okay. It is a practically debt-free company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Net, and, net uh, profit, sir? It, it, makes to... an, it, it makes a net profit? Yeah, it makes a net okay. profit and uh, we intend to take the turnover to uh, five to six times in next uh, three to four years. Okay. Uh, that okay. is as of now. Once we enter into the company, then we will explore further opportunity to increase the top line. And uh, major customers of this company is, of course, BMW, Rose and Royce, to which they provide embedded uh, systems and software for electronic control unit. Hmm. Uh, which is uh, used uh, in uh, body, BCU, uh, comfort, hmm. ECU, etc. Right. So you're saying like in the next three to four years, the target revenue for this is closer to around that 30, 35 uh, million euros. Is is that what your target is? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so in that case, you know, you spoke about a couple of these, uh, uh, comp the clients that uh, this company caters to, but we understand from the reports that, uh, uh, and the, uh, comp the clients that uh, this company caters to, but we understand from the reports that, uh, uh, and the data that comes by, is that there is a slowdown in both BMW as well as Rolls-Royce, all the luxury car segment itself. Do you expect uh, uh, this slowdown to continue? If yes, then till how long? In that case, what happens to the next few quarters of revenue for this acquisition that you've made? No, firstly, we are of the view that things are, or the market is considerably improving in Europe as far as automotive is concerned. Already we have got some manufacturing facilities in Spain, etc. And uh, there also turnover is improving. Mm. Having said that, particularly in Germany, the automotive numbers are improving. Mm. And we hope that uh, things will further improve. Okay. Uh, uh, macro situation remaining the same. Okay. And in any case, this acquisition will not only cater to Europe, but basic idea is to uh, connect it to the basic R&D facility in India, okay. bring that technology to the India, and, uh, and to, along with the central R&D and uh, ICs, yeah. they will provide solutions uh, for the Indian vehicle manufacturer. All right. So do you, will you buy the remaining 20% as well at some point of time? And what is the asset turn? You're saying that the yes. revenues will go up four times. How much of money you'll have to invest? Yeah, we will, as of now, the equity value of the company is six million. Hmm. And another one and a half million we will pump into the company as of now. And uh, as far as balance 20% is concerned, yes, as per the understanding with the promoters, 
uh, we will acquire additional 20 percent in the when? fifth or sixth year of acquisition. Fifth or sixth year. Sixth sir, or sixth year of acquisition. Sir, I just wanted to understand. So the asset turn means you know how much of money you will need to put to take your revenues up by four times. Will you have to put 50 crores to get a revenue of 200 crores? What is that ratio, sir? If you could tell us. No, it is basically a engineering services company. So here's the real asset is the manpower engineers okay. and okay. the IPR. So uh, basic manufacturing, etc., would be done in India. Okay. So man, Minda is basically a hardcore manufacturing company. So we, the basic purpose of acquisition is only that the technology comes from there and uh, manufacturing is done based on our experience in India or elsewhere, wherever we have got our plants, as of now in Indonesia, Vietnam. Right. Uh, in Mr. Jain, Mexico, et cetera. you have around 500 crores of cash in your books? No, 500 crore cash is not there. So, uh, what's the kind of liquidity that you have right now? Cash, current investments? No, on no. Right now? Okay, okay. No, no. We are that way. Let me tell you, we are the cash surplus. And uh, our debt equity ratio is 0.5 times of the net worth of the company. No, what we're so trying to get at is, are you looking at more acquisitions in this calendar year or in this fiscal year? Uh, yes, in case any good opportunity comes, definitely. The size that you have, at. the watch chest? No, we are looking at, uh, say, up to uh, 40, 50 million uh, euro equity value of the company. But having said that, no such opportunity is as okay. of now on the table. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Mr. Jain. Always a pleasure talking to you. All the best for the remainder of this year. Well, let's move on. Let's talk about the biggest loser on the Nifty. Now, in a setback to Dr. Reddy's, the U.S. District Court has converted a temporary injunction, injunction against the Gendrick Suboxone into a preliminary injunction. Uh, Ekta's with us to run us through those details. Hey, Ekta. Well, actually, it is definitely a big negative which yeah. has come in for Dr. Reddy's because this temporary injunction was actually imposed by imposed by a U.S. court um, uh, with regards to an at-risk launch that Dr. Reddy's had on the drug Suboxone. Now, just to give you a background, uh, the U.S. FDA approved Suboxone. Um, so that meant that Dr. Reddy's could launch the drug in the U.S. market, but at the same time, they had a litigation which was ongoing with the in, uh, innovator of the drug, which is basically Indivior. So what that means is that now this temporary injunction, which is now turned into a preliminary injunction, basically means that Dr. Reddy's cannot sell this particular drug unless that patent litigation, which was earlier pending with Indivior, is solved and resolved in terms of an outcome. Now, interestingly, Dr. Reddy's has sold around $25 billion dollars in terms of the product before it was asked to stop selling it. Plus, Indivior has been asked by the court to put aside a certain amount of money in terms of a bond in case they, in fact, uh, have to compensate Dr. Reddy's in terms of a loss. Dr. Reddy's will inform them about the certain amount of money that will eventually be paid. But as of now, the stock is reacting to the fact that it is an opportunity loss for Dr. Reddy's. Um, they are losing potential sales and a potential EPS addition, which is what the stock is reacting to. $75 million to $80 million were potential sales for Dr. Reddy's with a possible EPS addition of up to even 60 rupees in terms of a very optimistic scenario in selling this particular drug. It is an anti-drug addiction drug which has used um, $750 million in terms of sales in the U.S. All right, Ekta, thanks a lot for that. To use a bad pun, Dr. Reddy is not yet ready to launch Suboxon. With that, we'll slip into a short break, come back. We should focus on earnings. We'll decode the earnings for Infosys as well. As DCB Bank tell you what to expect from Hindustan. We're down 25 points and not 45 points is because Infosys. That's done a big U-turn of sorts from the low point of the day. Reema is going to tell us about the numbers as well as maybe why the stock's higher in today's trading session. Reema, over to you. Hi, uh, Nigel. Thanks so much for that. Well, we thought that the stock could be under pressure because the revenue growth was lower than consensus expectations. So in constant terms, the company delivered a 2.3% growth, much lower than the 4% plus that TCS had. BFSI was a weak spot. BFSI declining for uh, Infosys, whereas it drove growth for ATCS. That said, um, the company continues to maintain its F519 guidance. Some of the positives in the numbers were deal wins crossed $1 billion for the first time after seven quarters, and 40% of the deal wins came in from the BFSI sector, which perhaps gave you, uh, you know, signaled that a turnaround could be underway for BFSI. CLSE says the street sees the improvement in BFSI as secular, 
which will reflect in the Infosys numbers sooner rather than later. So they are taking a call that there is strength in the BFSI vertical and if not in this quarter, it will reflect in Infis numbers sooner. Other positives include retail did well, 6.2% growth, strong client mining, $100 million clients increasing by nearly four. Plus, there was a one to one bonus announced for shareholders to celebrate 25 years of listing. If you look at the brokerage verdict, uh, quite mixed. So Morgan Stanley has an overweight rating. CLSA continues to maintain a buy rating. Their target price is at 1560. But on the other hand, City is neutral, while Nomura has a reduced rating with a target price of 1130. Back to you. All right, Rima, thanks a lot for that. Can't say the same about DCB Bank, which is tanking in trade this morning, reacting to a week's set of earnings. Abhishek is here with the highlights. Abhishek. Well, Mangalam, the balance sheet growth has been pretty strong for DCB Bank. However, that is not the same with PNL. So, coming on to balance sheet uh, growth, you know, the loan growth at 30.6% is the highest in last seven quarters. However, the net interest margin at 3.9% is the lowest in 11 quarters. So, for third consecutive quarter, we have the NIA growth actually lacking behind the loan growth. So, while the loan growth has been improving, the NIA growth has been coming down. And you look at the operating profit, now, on account of the lower NIA growth and uh, lower treasury uh, profits you know the uh, operating profit growth was at just 3.7 percent which is the lowest in last eight quarters so you look at the absolute slippages at 107 crore plus it is the highest in last 13 quarters what that impacted was that the cross NPA in absolute value increased by eight and a half percent sequentially while in ratio wise gross NPA ratio was at 1.86 percent versus 1.79 percent in the previous quarter coming on to the PNL, NIA growth of 17%, while PAT growth of 6.5% has not been taken too well by the street. Back to you. Okay, all right. Thanks so much for that, Abhishek. Well, the other stock that's going to be in focus, particularly in the second half of trade, is Hindustan Unilever, trading at multi year highs of the highest levels we have seen. Right. Comes out its set of numbers. Manglam, what do we expect there? <laughs> Going towards 1800 rupees. Wow. Going towards 1800 rupees, that means 52 times uh, FI20 wow. earnings. Also, keep an eye on the fact, you know, last quarter, the HUL market cap was lower than ITC. This quarter, not only did it cross ITC's market cap, now it's the fourth highest market cap in among the listed players. So, that is something we'll have to watch out for. But over the last three quarters, it has been at a record high ahead of numbers. The street expects a strong quarter. No two ways about it. Why do they expect a strong quarter? It's all about the base, Nigel. The first, uh, uh, the first quarter of FI 18, that one was a weak quarter. There was GSE related destocking. The oh, volume yes. growth was zero percent. So the street is working with about uh, uh, the street is working with about 11 to 12 percent as far as the volume growth is concerned. Uh, for the three numbers to watch out for, revenue growth of close to around 90, uh, revenue of 9700 crore, EBITDA of 2200 crore, as well as a net profit of close to 1550 crore is something that the street will be watching out for. Okay, Manglam. Well, at around 17, uh, 700 or 600. 800 people are talking about it being expensive. Manglam telling us it's trading at around 52 times. And that's really, you know, some of these stocks are going to get that higher multiple because what else do you buy? You want to park your money in safe stocks? Then you put your money in the best in class, the TCS, the, you know, the HULs of the world, maybe the Bajaj Finance, Kotak Mahindra Bank. And uh, you want to be safe and you're getting some capital appreciations. You're saying, oh, why not? We'll wait by for those set of numbers stock at multi-year highs. Manglam, let's wind up. Absolutely. Let's wind up. Just one last point on Hindustan Unilever. One of their key products is Surf Excel, mm, and the tagline excellent. for Surf Excel is "Dag Ache Hai." The dag is of valuation. Well, these dag are good because of the management. You're so good, Mangalam. You're going to be such a good husband, I think. You're I don't know, know about all, all of these that. Products. I think we should. Wrap. You know about Lux. You know about Fair and Lovely, Surf Excel. Wow, that lucky lady out there is waiting <laughs> for you. On that note, we'll wrap up on Chartbusters. You stay with us. Trading R comes up next.